When it comes to Greek mythology, some of the stories you'll find out there are pretty strange. Goddesses being birthed from clam shells, women being kidnapped by Hades, and plenty of stories of cheating god-husbands. But if you go past the more well-known myths, things start to get even weirder. Yes, those wacky gods on Mount Olympus have a serious strange streak that would shock even the most open-minded historian, this is not to say that that these Greek myths aren't entertaining. I mean, come on, hearing about gods impregnating clouds or mortals being cursed for eternity is just oodles of fun, right? Just keep in mind that these myths were meant as life lessons for the Greeks, though for a few of these. The meaning is either pretty obscure or just too weird to imagine, so, if you're up for a little lesson in bizarre mythology, listen on. And if you take away two major points from these stories, we hope they're the following, don't piss off the gods, because they're jerks, and Zeus really, really needs to learn to keep it in his pants. 1. Erisichthon is so hungry that he eats himself to death, on the theme of, never piss off the gods, let's have a look at Erisichthon. This man was incredibly greedy and incredibly rich, and really didn't pay the gods much mind. One day, he cut down a sacred grove of trees in order to build another feast hall, as the rich are wont to do. Demeter was slighted by this, and decided to punish him. She gave him an appetite so strong that he ate everything. He ate all the food he had, then all the food he could buy, until he had completely exhausted his wealth, he even tried to sell his own daughter for food. This reduced him to such poverty that he lost all standing, his home, everything. When he had nothing else left, he turned on himself and died eating his own flesh off his body. 2. Leda gets down and sleep with a swan, throughout all of mythology, Zeus sleeps with basically everyone, gods, demigods, mortals, animals, and even sometimes with mortals while disguised as animals. One of the strangest myths involving this is that of Leda and the swan, in the story, Zeus sees Leda and admires her from afar. In order to get with her, he transforms into a swan and then seduces her. How does a swan seduce a woman? We're not sure, and we probably don't want to know. The two mated, and from this union came two sets of twins. One of these children, born from an egg, no less, was named Helen. Yes, as in Helen of Troy, allegedly the most beautiful woman alive. The mythology makes no note, however, if her mother ever told her that she was half Zeus Swan. 3. Kronos eats all the children he can produce and cuts off his dad's penis, back when the world was just beginning, at least according to the Greeks, there was a titan god named Kronos, or Cronus, depending on our records. He was birthed of a god called Auranas, also called the Sky, and married to a goddess called Rhea. He was power-obsessed in the worst way, and proved this by castrating his father in order to become the top dog, from there, because he feared one of his own children would overthrow him, he proceeded to eat every single one of his offspring. Well, except for one, named Zeus, who did eventually overthrow him. And by, overthrow, we mean that Zeus grew up, sought out Kronos. And forced him to vomit up all the baby gods he'd eaten over the years. The gods were somehow still alive, and a great war raged for over a decade between them and the Titans, with Zeus and his siblings eventually winning out. 4. Pan creates the Pan flute out of a woman who rejected him, Pan is, in general, a pretty nasty guy. Some myths say he was birthed from Penelope, Odysseus's wife, while others say it was a nymph, or even Aphrodite herself. He was known for tending, and sometimes having relations with his sheep, and for wanting to get with basically every female he ever laid eyes on, one such nymph, Syrinx, really wasn't very open to these advances, and fled from Pan. The creepy half-goat half-man followed her, chasing her through the woods. Eventually, Syrinx became so fed up with this, that she got a river god to transform her into something Pan couldn't possible lust after, a bunch of reeds, but Pan was so determined to have her, that he decided to take a piece of her with him everywhere. He used the reeds to craft a flute, what is known today as the Pan Flute. It just goes to show that stalker-like behavior stretches back thousands of years. 5. Ixion impregnates a cloud to create centaurs, the story goes that Ixion was in exile for certain crimes against fellow humans, when Zeus took pity on him and invited him to come to Olympus as a guest, you'll figure out pretty quickly in this list that Zeus doesn't make a lot of great decisions. Once there, he saw Hera and became completely obsessed with getting her into bed. To test his loyalty, Zeus created a cloud version of Hera, which Ixion then somehow impregnated, 
how does one impregnate a cloud? It's hard to say, but we do know that Zeus became angry and punished Ixion by transforming him into a giant flaming wheel. And what of his cloud offspring? He was named Centaurus. And was known for mating with a whole bunch of horses, and from that came the mythical creature known as the centaur, half man and half horse. Makes all those centaur scenes from Harry Potter seem a little bit more uncomfortable now, doesn't it? 6. Dionysus gestates in Zeus's thigh, there have been some weird births in Greek mythology, a few of which we'll touch on more later, but Dionysus, god of wine and good times, was probably has one of the strangest. It all begins with Zeus, again, not being able to keep it in his pants. He slept with a mortal princess named Semele, and she became pregnant with his child, Hera, Zeus's wife, took issue with this, as she usually did, and decided to ruin everything. She sowed seeds of doubt in the girl's mind, and eventually Semele asked to see Zeus in full, to know that he really existed and really loved her. Zeus had sworn an oath to do anything for her, and was bound to do it, of course, seeing Zeus in all his glory killed any mortal who looked, and the princess was engulfed in flame. Even though his new lover was dead, Zeus was determined to save their unborn baby. So, of course, he took him from her womb and put him someplace safe, in his own thigh. Zeus managed to keep the baby there until he was big enough to emerge. 7. Lycurgus of Thrace mistakes his son for a plant, remember the whole theme of don't piss off the gods? Lycurgus could have really used a reminder of that before he received one of the stranger punishments ever dished out. The story goes that Lycurgus attacked and injured everyone's favorite party god, Dionysus, while he was on a wine tour through the mortal world, the gods punished Lycurgus with madness. In the heat of this madness, Lycurgus saw his son and instantly said, by golly, there's a weed or a vine over there that needs clipping. He then promptly got an axe and killed his own son, as well as the rest of his family, after that, some myths say he used the same axe to cut off his own legs. As one does in a fit of madness. Even after death, he was given no respect, and was entombed in a rock. So if you're going to wrong the gods, wronging the god of wine and good times is probably your worst bet. 8. Baby Athena gives Zeus a splitting headache, unsurprisingly, we're back to Zeus being a hopeless lek. There was a woman named Metis whom Zeus desired. She heard a prophecy that her child would overthrow Zeus. He too got wind of this and did the only logical thing, swallow the lady and her unborn child whole. Problem solved, right? Sometime later, Zeus began to have terrible headaches. Hermes, who was a pretty bright guy, told Hephaestus to take a wedge and break open Zeus's skull, because apparently that's how you cure headaches. When they cut open Zeus's skull, a fully grown female warrior sprang out, completely dressed in warrior's armor. This was Athena, appropriately enough, the goddess of wisdom and intellect. 9. Hera keeps restoring her own virginity for fun, sometimes people just need a spa day to unwind, but Hera took it one extra, kind of unnerving step. Every year, Hera would go to the spring of Canathos at Noplia, where she'd have a nice, lovely, relaxing bath. But while she was having fun, relaxing, and bathing, she'd also magically restore her own virginity, this meant that Hera was perpetually a virgin, no matter how many people, including her own husband, she went to bed with. And considering Zeus' sexual appetite, would anyone blame her if she had someone on the side? But it didn't stop there. Mortals would actually bathe statues of her to restore her virginity, oftentimes before major social events. As a sign of reverence. 10. Athena punishes Arachne for being really good at weaving, you may have heard a variation of this before. There was a woman named Arachne who was an exquisite seamstress. She was so exquisite that she occasionally boasted that she was better even than Athena, who was supposed to be the best weaver in existence. Athena heard this and cautioned the girl to shut up before someone made her shut up. When she didn't listen, Athena challenged her to a weaving contest, intent on knocking Arachne down a peg or two, but Arachne was more than just talk, and when the weaving was completed, Athena saw that the tapestry she'd made was flawless, better than anything she herself had made. In a fit of jealousy and anger, she cursed the girl to feel guilty for what she had done, so guilty, in fact, that she took her own life. Athena then transformed her into a spider, so that she could weave for all eternity. 11. Siron asks people to wash his feet, then kicks them off a cliff, of course, not only the gods were jerks. Once, 
There was a man named Siron who liked to rob people. His method of doing this was that he would call to travelers on the road, asking for help washing his feet. When they would offer to help, he would kick them in the face, pushing them over a cliff. At the base of the cliff would be a giant tortoise, which would eat the remains, or the still living, if the fall did not kill them, he did this over and over again, killing many people. The hero Theseus eventually became tired of this guy's shenanigans, and sought him out. It said that when he did find Siron, he threw him off the cliff. Which I think most people would consider a pretty reasonable thing to do given the circumstances. 12. Circe turns Odysseus's crew into pigs, and then they don't want to go home, Circe was, in general, kind of a weird lady. She is said to be the daughter of a titan, lived on an island called Colchis, and could perform all manner of magic. When Odysseus and his men came her way, she invited them to a feast, and the men happily attended, without their buzzkill captain Odysseus. Circe, however, cast some magic on the food that turned his men into pigs. Odysseus got wind of this and, with a word of caution from Hermes, came to confront her about it, she confessed, said sorry, turned the men back and then. Odysseus just seemed to forget about it all. He and his men just stayed there for a whole year, partying, rather than finishing their epic voyage and quest. In some tales, Odysseus shares Circe's bed, even having children with her. Considering Odysseus was married, to a very loyal wife, this is kind of a cruddy move on his part. 13. The gods make Sisyphus and Tantalus suffer for all eternity, if you want proof that the gods had a pretty nasty sense of humor, you need look no further than Sisyphus and Tantalus. In life, Tantalus was often invited to Mount Olympus with the gods, but he was a pretty terrible guest. He stole ambrosia and then gave it to his other mortal friends, and even served the gods meat from the body of his own son rather than a proper feast. To punish him, the gods, who just love their irony, put him in the deepest parts of Tartarus, there, his eternal punishment was to be submerged in water and shaded by fruit trees. Whenever he would try to drink, the water would move away from him, and whenever he reached up for the fruit, the trees would pull away. That way he'd forever be hungry and thirsty, with things he wanted just out of reach, Sisyphus is a bit more simple punishment-wise, but no less maddening. He was a very cunning man in life, often tricking the gods, his fellow mortals, and even death itself. In punishment for being such a sneaky guy, the gods condemned him to roll a boulder uphill for all eternity. Whenever he would reach the top of the hill, the boulder would roll back down and he'd have to begin all over again. No tricks, no way out, forever. The moral of these stories? Never piss off the gods. 14. Apollo captains a ship while he's a dolphin, here we have a rare case of a Greek god not being a jerk. Apollo grew to adulthood, in four days, by the way, on a small island that he could not leave. One day, he decided to try to escape in one of the weirdest ways possible. He transformed himself into a dolphin and caused a raging storm in the sea, as dolphins apparently do, he spotted a ship that was in distress and decided to save it. He leapt up on deck, still in dolphin form, and guided the ship to a safe place on the shore. From there he set off to do whatever gods do when they're a five-day-old adult. Later, in honor of this method of escape, Apollo named a city Delphi, after his dolphin form. 15. Heracles kills a giant by holding him off the ground, you've probably heard of Hercules, also called Heracles, because of a lovely little Disney movie which did not seem to understand that Pegasus wasn't made of clouds. Hint, he was created from the blood of monsters and death, anyway, Hercules was quite the hero, taking on anything that came his way, and winning every time. One such foe was a giant named Antaeus, who was completely immortal as long as his feet touched the ground. Why? Because his mother was the earth, Gaia, and all his powers came straight from her. So, Hercules went and found this giant, who loved to challenge anyone and everyone to wrestling matches, Hercules accepted. And they began to wrestle. He quickly found that any time he threw the giant to the ground, he would just regenerate. Using that other often overlooked muscle, his brain, Hercules figure out what needed to be done. He held the giant aloft until all his power and life was drained, and he died. It hardly seems like a fair move, but then again, neither is being immortal, so it probably evens out. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the bizarre and sometimes unsettling tales of Greek mythology. 
These stories, filled with gods, monsters, and inexplicable events, leave us both fascinated and disturbed. From vengeful deities to monstrous creatures, the ancient Greeks crafted narratives that continue to intrigue and captivate us today. Remember, behind these eerie tales lie lessons about human nature, the unpredictable forces of the world, and the eternal struggle between good and evil. Stay curious, stay fascinated, and until next time, may your own adventures be just a tad less mythically strange, 